Hey there, fellow knowledge seekers. Ready to dive into some serious philosophy today. Always up for that. We're tackling Heraclitus. You know, the ancient Greek philosopher, famous for that, change is the only constant idea. Ah, Heraclitus. Even back in ancient Greece, they called him the obscure. Okay, yeah, obscure is one way to put it. But that's why we're doing a deep dive, right? To decode this legendary thinker. Exactly. We're going to unpack his ideas, look at the fragments of his writings we have. Which, by the way, are super enigmatic. It's like trying to solve a philosophical puzzle. It's true. Scholars have been debating his meaning for centuries. But that's part of what makes him so fascinating. Absolutely. So, for those of us who haven't cracked open Heraclitus lately, who was he and why should we care what he had to say? Great question. So, picture ancient Greece, like 6th century BC. Mm. Heraclitus is one of these pre-Socratic philosophers, meaning he came before Socrates and really shook things up. Pre-Socratic. So, yeah. laying the groundwork for guys like Socrates to come along and blow everyone's minds. Exactly. But instead of focusing on cosmology, like the origins of the universe, Heraclitus was all about this concept of the Logos. Logos? Sounds intense. It is. It's a big one. For Heraclitus, the Logos was this underlying principle, this universal force governing everything. Think of it like the invisible thread connecting everything in the universe. Okay, so it's not just about everything constantly changing. It's about how there's this deeper something holding it all together, right? You got it. And this idea that even with all the chaos and constant change, there's this underlying order. It's huge in Heraclitus's work. Right, like there's a method to the madness. Totally. And he believed that everything is in this constant state of flux, this constant flow, which he famously compared to a river. Yeah, here comes the river analogy. I knew it was coming. No man ever steps in the same river twice. For it's not the same river and he's not the same man. Right, there you go. Such a classic quote. I always thought it was just about like how time keeps moving forward, things change, yada, yada. But there's more to it, isn't there? Way more. It's not just that the river itself is changing, but that we are too. Every experience we have, every moment that passes, shapes us, transforms us. We're different than we were a minute ago. It's true when you think about it, like traveling to a new place or going through a major life change. You're not the same person on the other side. Exactly. And that's Heraclitus's point. It's not just the external world that's always changing. It's our internal world too. Our thoughts, beliefs, everything. Mm. They're constantly shifting based on what's around us. Whoa, okay, that's kind of a mind-blowing concept. So if we're always changing, if we can never really step into the same river twice, what's the point of it all then? That's where Heraclitus gets really, really interesting. He doesn't want us to feel existential dread about all this change. Well, that's a relief. He actually suggests that there's beauty in it, that this constant transformation is actually necessary. Okay, now you've got to explain that one because how can something that feels so uncertain also be beautiful? Well, for Heraclitus, it's all about finding the harmony in opposites. He's got this amazing quote, the unlike is joined together, and from differences results the most beautiful harmony. So wait, even though things seem chaotic and contradictory, he's saying there's actually some kind of balance happening. You're getting it. Think about it. Light and dark, hot and cold, even life and death. These things exist in relation to each other. You can't have one without the other. And it's the tension between them, that constant interplay, that creates the world as we experience it. Hmm. That is a very different way of looking at things. Usually we think of opposites as being, well, opposite, not as part of some bigger harmonious thing. And that's why Heraclitus is so insightful. He's challenging us to look beyond just the surface to see how interconnected everything really is. Okay, so we're talking constant change, underlying order, the harmony of opposites. It's a lot to take in. But what I really want to know is, how did Heraclitus think we should actually live our lives knowing all of this? So we can't just kick back and watch the river flow, right? Heraclitus must have had some thoughts on how to live life with all this in mind. Totally. He believed that understanding the Logos, remember that underlying order of the universe, that was key to a good life, mm -hmm. a wise life, a fulfilling life even. He wasn't all about just like abstract ideas, you know. Yeah, he wanted to make it relevant, right? Yeah. Connect it back to being human. Exactly. And he was big on self-knowledge. He's got this quote, because right to the core of it, the soul has died the color of its thoughts. The soul has died the color of its thoughts. Whoa. Our beliefs actually shape who we are at our core. Is that what he's saying? You got it. What we think about, what we dwell on, it literally shapes us. It's like we're constantly dying our souls with all of it, our thoughts, our attitudes, all of it. Okay, that is a powerful image. 
But it also kind of makes you think, if we're not careful, we could end up with some pretty messed up colors in there, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's where Heraclitus' focus on wisdom comes in. Not just, like, knowing a bunch of facts, but really understanding what matters. He said, much learning does not teach understanding. Isn't that great? It's so true. You can read a million books, but if it doesn't sink in, if you don't actually let it change you... It's pointless. It won't make you wise. This is about knowing yourself, right? Mm. And your place in all of this. There you go. And get this. He thought our character, who we are deep down, that, that determines our destiny. He actually said, flat out, man's character is his fate. So we're not just like along for the ride. We have some say in how it all goes down. 100%. We have choices. We have actions. Oh. And those things, they shape who we become. And that shapes how our lives unfold. Of course, we can't control everything that happens. Right. No one's got that kind of power. But we can control how we react. And that's where character is so important. When things get tough, when we have to make choices, that's when we really find out who we are. That's both empowering and kind of scary at the same time. Like, we're really responsible for the choices we make, the kind of person we become. Right. But with responsibility comes freedom. We have the power to choose what we believe, what kind of people we want to be. It's amazing when you think about it. It really is. So bringing it back to the Logos, are we all just these little rivers flowing into the big river and our choices are like steering us? I love that analogy. It's perfect. And the wild part is even though we're each on our own path, we're all still part of that larger interconnected thing. Remember how Heraclitus used fire as a metaphor for the Logos? Yeah, constantly changing, but still like yeah. a fundamental element. Right. We're like that too. Always evolving, but still connected to something so much bigger. It's amazing to think about him, you know, all those years ago, coming up with these ideas that still resonate today. What do you think he'd make of the world today? It's a bit different from ancient Greece, to say the least. Right. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. I mean, the technology, the pace of life. Yeah. I think he'd be pretty overwhelmed. Totally. Like, imagine just dropping him into the middle of Times Square. It's a lot, even for us sometimes. Sensory overload doesn't even begin to cover it. Yeah. You know, part of me thinks that on some level, he might also recognize something familiar in it all. Really? How so? Well, think about his big ideas, right? Yeah. Constant change, unity of opposites, the logos as this underlying order. That's still going on, isn't it? Even in our crazy modern world. When you put it like that, it's kind of wild how relevant his ideas still feel. Like he tapped into something deeper about just being human, something that goes beyond any one time or place. Exactly. And that's what's so amazing about these ancient philosophers. Their ideas, they can still speak to us thousands of years later. It's like we're having a conversation with them across time and space, and they still get it somehow. So as we're wrapping up this deep dive into Heraclitus, what's the one thing you want our listeners to walk away with? You know, for me, it's the importance of perspective. Heraclitus reminds us that change is unavoidable. It's actually necessary. But even in all that chaos, there's also this underlying harmony. It connects everything. And how we choose to look at that change, how we react to it, that's on us. It's our choice. That's such a good point. It's both a challenge and kind of comforting at the same time. Like, yeah, things are always changing, but there's something bigger at play here, something eternal, something that connects us all. Perfectly said. Yeah. And A, maybe, just maybe, if we can really take some of Heraclitus' wisdom to heart, we can learn to relax a little, you know? Embrace the flow, as they say. Now that's a thought to end on. Thanks for geeking out with us about Heraclitus today. We'll be back soon with another deep dive into the world of big ideas. Wake up with purpose, feel that fire in your chest. Life's a gift, man. Breathe it in, give it your best. Stars in the sky, a mirror of what's inside. Change is the game, let your spirit be your guide. So many unbreakable Control your thoughts, find the strength, set yourself free. Opinions fly in the world full of noise and stress. The truth lies within you, put your soul to the test. Anger burns hot, but revenge leaves you cold. Kindness is the weapon that's how the story's told. Don't judge a book by its cover, look deeper and stand. Find the good in everyone, let that wisdom spread. So great in my unbreakable recipe. Control your thoughts, find the strength, set yourself free. Opinions flying, the world full of noise and stress. The truth lies within you, put your soul to the test.
Yeah. They try to knock you down, throw obstacles your way, but you rise above the drama. Five piece every day. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of thoughts. Keep that fire burning bright. The power you got. In the moment, that's where the true power lies. A stoic warrior, wisdom in your eyes. If it is not right, do not do it. Keep it real. The soul becomes die with the color of its thoughts. How you feel? Stoic, oh, unbreakable, find the strength within. You got this, no doubt. The victory you'll win. Talk loud, try to dim your inner light But they ain't worth your time, rise above the petty fight Remember everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact Stay true to your path, keep your integrity intact It's not death a man should fear, but never beginning to live So seize the day, let your spirit soar, got so much to give Focus on the good, leave the negativity behind Stow with warrior state of mind, that's the legacy you'll find There is no tomorrow There is no tomorrow there is no tomorrow! Say Blackjack, Vinny. Uh, this is it. This is it! You see this guy here staring back at you? Yeah? That's your toughest opponent. Every time you get into the ring, that's who you're going against. I believe that in boxing, and I do believe that in life. Let me tell you something you already know. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Anger is your biggest tool. Fighting angry, that drains you twice as fast. <laughs> yeah, the guy in the ring is your enemy, but make his mistakes be his destruction. Now go out there and show me how you do things. Show me how you live. Show me how you fight. Because I want to be great. And you're not. I want to be one of the greats. You love this game. I mean, love it with your whole heart. Because if you don't, let's not even bother. Let's not open that door. They're just going to slam it right in our face. I love this game. I live this game. And there's a thousand other guys waiting in the wings who are obsessed with this game. Obsession is going to be talent every time. You got all the talent in the world, but are you obsessed? Is it all you ever think about? At some point, you will realize no one else has a say in your life unless you let them. Be kind and generous without expecting anything in return. God has entrusted me with myself. Epictetus. Laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him. It is only through an apprenticeship that one becomes a master. One of the great strategies for success is to act as if you are already where you want to be. Jack Canfield The nature of the universe, of the common substance of all things as it were, of so much wax hath now perchance formed a horse, and then destroying that figure, hath new tempered and fashioned the matter of it into the form and substance of a tree, then that again into the form and substance of a man, and then that again into some other. Now every one of these doth subsist but for a very little while. As for dissolution, 
if it be no grievous thing to the chest or trunk, to be joined together, why should it be more grievous to be put asunder? If I want to be ready for that meeting tomorrow, I need to finish preparing for it today. If I want to make sure I can pay for my kids' college education, I need to start saving today. If I want a better life tomorrow, I need to start working on it today. Ambition is a minute-by-minute, day-by-day mentality. To have the ambition to work towards a better family life, a newer car, a bigger house, a financially secure future, you have to live it every moment. If living a successful life was easy, I'm sure more people would be successful. If just being ambitious was enough, I'm sure all of the broke and perplexed people in the world wouldn't be broke and perplexed. While most people spend most of their lives struggling to earn a living, a much smaller number seem to have everything going their way. Instead of just earning a living, the smaller group is busily working at building and enjoying a fortune. Everything just seems to work out for them. And here sits the much larger group, wondering in awe on how life can be so unfair, complicated, and unjust. So what's the major difference between the little group with so much and the larger group with so little? Despite all the factors that affect our lives, like the kind of parents we have, the schools we attended, the part of the country we grew up in, none has as much potential power for doing good as the ability to dream. Dreams are a projection of the kind of life we want to lead. Dreams can drive you. Dreams can make you skip over obstacles. When we allow our dreams to pull us, they unleash a creative force that can overpower everything in our way. To unleash this... We've got to do what's right for you, even if it hurts some people you love. Strong people are always simple. Dumb Spiro Sparrow, while I breathe, I hope. Latin proverb. Fear not death, for the sooner we die, the longer we shall be immortal. To realize one's destiny is a person's only obligation. The essence of wisdom is to know when to stop. Alan Watts Even as if any of the gods should tell thee, Thou shalt certainly die tomorrow or next day, thou wouldst not, except thou wert extremely base and pusillanimous. Take it for a great benefit, rather to die the next day after than tomorrow. For alas, what is the difference? So, for the same reason, think it no great matter to die rather many years after than the very next day. Living out their true potential and not doing all of the things that they would really like to do is because of fear. Some people call fear false evidence or expectations appearing real. We are brilliant enough to scare ourselves to death. Do you realize that? What are the things that you fear? that's been keeping you from living your dream, that's been keeping you from doing some things that you would like to do. Just think about those things. And how do we begin to handle that? Abraham Maslow said that the life is about growth. And he said, you can either go back to your comfort zone and there you won't find any growth or be willing to go forward and face your fears because you're never going to have a fear-free existence. I mean, some fear is acceptable and legitimate. There are some things that you, you really should be afraid of. Now, you shouldn't allow it to immobilize you. You acknowledge it, you take it into account, and you carry yourself accordingly. There are times that we should proceed with caution, but it's the difference between being stopped by fear it's the difference between having a fear and the fear having you. So what do we do? One, acknowledge it and knowing that it's okay. Don't condemn yourself for being afraid. It's perfectly fine to have some fears. You acknowledge your fears, 
you embrace those fears and then you move on. You act on whatever it is that you fear. Because once you embrace it, see, what you resist will persist. What you resist will persist. So one of the most important things is, is to begin to embrace your fear. The fear of bodily harm, that's legitimate. When I was a disc jockey in Columbus, Ohio, Al Green, who was a great performer at that time, had a record. His first hit record was Backup Train. So a guy came in the town and was impersonating Al Green. I happened to know Al Green because I'd already booked him. And so when I found out this guy was impersonating Al Green, I came on the air and did an editorial. Life will separate you from your friends, so appreciate each moment you have together. People are great at keeping secrets they don't know. A ship should not rely on one small anchor, nor should life rest on a single hope. Chinese proverb. Remember that what you now have was once among the things you only hoped for. Close some doors, not because of pride, incapacity or arrogance, but simply because they no longer lead somewhere.